So what is the immediate spin cross mat? Now, first of all, the basic requirement is that that the antibody screen should be negative in the recipient. The recipient's serum or the plasma should not contain any kind of clinically significant antibody. So the antibody screen should be should come out to be negative in the recipient. Now, why is it important? It will be become clear when I discussed about the indirect Coombs test. Okay, so try and understand. Very important. So over here, I have taken the recipient's serum in a particular test tube and that recipient serum is containing the antibodies present in the recipient. Now to that recipient serum, I am adding a saline suspension of donor red cells. So the donor red cells are added over here. Now what we do, we are incubating it. Okay. And then we are centrifuging. This is incubated at room temperature and then they are centrifuged for five minutes. So the idea of centrifugation, it is to bring this antibody and this antigen very close to each other so that it can increase the sensitivity of the test. Now, for example, if you see agglutination, as you can see in the first test tube, okay, these are the bits of agglutination. You can see the RBC clumps over here. Then it is a case of incompatible cross match. But for example, if the RBCs are uniformly suspended, as we see in the second test tube, then it is a compatible cross match. So only after compatible cross match has been proved that we can issue this particular donor unit. Is it very clear? The immediate spin cross match, everyone? Uh, packet of the whole blood okay now this is just a donor unit okay and all things for example it is not being issued at this point of time that is why many things are not written over here but what are the things that we can see okay let us do a checklist of the things that we can appreciate so we can see over here the name of the blood product yes this is the whole blood okay we can see the donor unit number. So the unit number is given over here. The barcoding is being done over here. Also, there are many units barcoding is being done. There is an expiration date, which is then can you see the expiry? There's an EXP 13th April 2016 is the expiry date. Okay. Then the ABORH typing. Yes, the ABORH typing is over here. Now, basically, this is the unit that has just been collected. It has not been issued to anyone. Now, for example, if this was to be issued to a patient, in that case, over here, a particular sticker would be there. For example, they will put a sticker over here. They will write the patient's name, patient's registration number. Okay. Also, they will put a sticker nearby for the cross match result, whether it is compatible or no, the, that should be compatible. Okay. And also before issuing the blood, you should do a visual inspection for any kind of clot or discoloration if it is present. I hope you understand what are the things that we are checking before we issue the blood sample okay, to the recipient. Okay. So with this, we have completed the cross matching in details. So good morning, everyone. Today, we are going to continue with blood banking. And today we are going to understand what is compatibility testing and what is and what are the infections that we are screening for. So basically, the basic purpose of compatibility testing it is to avoid any kind of hemolytic transfusion reaction in the recipient. Okay, so this is the basic idea about that. So the basic idea of compatibility testing is to avoid hemolytic transfusion reaction in the <coughs> recipient. So now you all must be thinking that, sir, we have already read about the blood banking in details. We have read about the blood grouping. We have done the ABO typing. We have done the RH typing. Then what is the re requirement? What is the need? of doing again a cross matching or a compatibility testing. Yes. So can anyone tell me what is the requirement? I have already done the ABORH typing. Then why is it required to go for another cross match? So because in case of um, blood bond diseases may be transmitted to the recipient. Okay. Blood bond diseases that might be transmitted that is coming under infection, but I am not talking about infection. When we are doing the compatibility testing, we are not screening for the infection. Screening of infection is another part of the video, but compatibility okay. testing, why are we doing again? Yes, can okay. anyone tell me? RH, RH incompatibility and ABO incompatibility. So for that, I have done the ABO and RH typing I have done to. I have already done the ABO and RH typing. Then why is it that I have to do a compatibility testing? See, first try to understand. So try to understand one important thing over here. The important thing over here is that that whenever we have, uh, you know, whenever we were doing the tests, we have taken the RBC on one hand and the RBC antigen. 
So according to Landsteiner's law, according to Landsteiner's law, according to your Landsteiner's law, if we see, okay. So in accordance with the Landsteiner's law that we see, so RBC is having one antigen, and whenever a particular antigen, for example, antigen A is there, so the blood group will be A type. Okay. So the corresponding antibody will be absent. So instead of anti A, they will be having anti B. Okay. So when we are doing the blood grouping, we are just taking into account anti A, anti B, anti AB as the antibody which is present in the serum. But apart from this, many other antibodies can be present that we do not have any idea about. Understand? So for example, if I want to just uh, tell you, if I want to give you an example, suppose if you are ordering a particular shoes from online, okay? So for example, the, the size of your shoes is size eight. Okay. So everyone knows and for whole life you are wearing size eight, but can you be very sure that whatever size you are going to order online, the size eight is going to fit you perfectly? No, it cannot. That is why we go to the shopping mall and we prefer to wear the shoes once even before we buy yes or no whenever you are going you know that your size is eight so we have done the abrh typing okay we know that our size is eight or the blood group is this we know that but before giving the blood transfusion or before i am going you to buy that particular shoes i am going to wear it once that is what is compatibility testing that i am taking a recipient's serum and I'm adding the donor's antibody and uh, not antibody do, uh, and I'm adding the donor's uh, uh, red blood cell, the antigen. And I'm going to see if there is any reaction between the, the recipient's antibody and the donor's RBC. So that is what is the meaning of cross matching. That is, I am going to give, I'm going to prepare a small sample that what is happening to that sample because not only the anti-A, we have just read about anti-B or anti-A or anti AB or anti D. These are the antibodies that we have come across, but not necessarily, not necessarily you are going to have only these antibodies. In addition to these antibodies, there might be thousands of different kinds of antibodies, which might have thousands of different source. So to make sure that there is no kind of reaction, we are taking little sample of the recipient, little sample of the donor. We are mixing it to see if there is any other kind of reaction. Is this now very clear? What is the use of compatibility testing or what is the use of cross matching? Yes, everyone. Yes, so always remember, this is a very important thing. And this is an important exam question. It has come it, every year. It comes in the exam. It is asked somewhere or the other cross matching. And every year there is some doubt regarding the same. So always remember cross matching is the final testing, which I'm doing before I'm going to issue the blood sample. Okay. So let us begin today's lecture. So let us see what is the procedure of obscuring or, you know, of getting a blood sample. So the checklist, what are the checklists for compatibility testing? So you should have a written or electronic order by the concerned doctor. Okay. Or the health professional. Okay. He should have given the order for blood grouping, RH typing, and he should have given the order for cross matching and antibody screening. And he should have also mentioned which type of blood component is required. So in the previous lecture, we have read about the blood component. Yes. So that must be clear to everyone, which blood component product is required. That has to be mentioned clearly. And there should be signature of the particular healthcare professional. The second thing is there should be a proper identification of the recipient. So whoever requires the blood. Okay. So at the bedside, you have to go, the nurse has to collect the blood sample at the bedside. They have to go at the time of collection only. They have to identify the patient. What is the name? What is the age? What is the sex of the patient? How you will identify? There is a registration number that is given. A barcoding is there always. So you should, you should identify the recipient. And this is done at the bedside. At the time of identification only, you are going to collect the blood sample of the recipient. And in which while are you going to collect the blood sample? See, for the recipient, we are to test the serum sample. We have to check the antibodies. So what are we afraid of that? Whatever blood sample I'm going to give to the recipient. Okay. If there is a hemolytic reaction, it is between the, the recipient's antibody and the donor's red cell. So the recipient's uh, serum sample is required. So that is why we are going to collect the sample in either a clot vial or nowadays they are collecting in anticoagulant vials 
for example in the edta vial also you can collect okay so you have to collect the blood sample in proper collection tube okay with proper amount of blood and you have to do the labeling now you might might be thinking why sir is giving so much stress at this small thing this is not a small thing if you see 95% of the blood transfusion reaction is because of clerical error is because of incorrect identification of either the recipient or the donor that is why this becomes the most important step now after you have collected after you have collected the recipient's blood okay that you that you have you know that person has given that recipient's blood to the patient party and the patient party has taken it to the blood bank in the blood bank as soon as you receive the recipient's blood you are going to do, do the abo and rh typing you are also going to do something called as antibody screening of the recipient so there are certain clinically significant antibodies apart from anti a anti b anti ab as i was telling you so these might be of igg type mostly so they are checking for certain igg antibodies maybe the person is having some you know previous sensitization from or previous you know immunization has been there okay sensitization has been there because of previous multiple transfusion he has developed some antibodies okay that is not present in every individual so, but might be present in few of them so we carry out an antibody screening to detect any clinically significant antibodies okay and we take the previous transfusion history if there was any kind of you know mismatch transfusion or hemolytic reaction or any kind of transfusion reaction was there or any history that is available from the past is being taken by the blood bank okay after this after the blood bank has done this what the blood bank will do the blood bank is going to choose a donor blood that should match with the recipient's blood so basically at the time so whenever someone is giving a donor's blood okay whenever some you are donating a blood at the time of collection only you are carrying out the abo and rh typing of the donor you are doing the antibody screening as well at the time of collection only okay after that repeat abo and rhd typing of the donor blood is being done so you are repeating now this is at the time when you want to issue the blood so once you have already done the rh typing at the time of collection again you are repeating the abo rh typing when you are wanting to issue that particular blood sample okay then comes the seventh the most important step that i have shown in red that is cross matching so cross matching is basically the final check that you are doing so for example if you want to go and buy a new car okay for example you like mercedes that car is very nice the whole world knows that mercedes is a very good brand so a car is costing around 40 to 50 lakh rupees it's very expensive car around 10000 dollars so for that car that if that you want to buy that particular car okay okay everyone knows that okay mercedes is a good car but once before buying you have to do a test ride or no you have to do a test ride this is this final checklist the final the final you know test that you do before issuing a blood sample that is the cross matching so for that what we do we are testing we are taking a small amount of the recipient serum because over here the question is the recipient's antibody i want to check whether the recipient's antibody okay is acting against the donor's antigen that is the donor's rbc you all know that the rbc is containing the antigen so this is what the testing is done we are we are mixing both of them and we are seeing if there is any kind of reaction okay the sixth step the eighth step is the cross matched donor unit that has been cross matched with the recipient it is inspected from outside we check it from outside whether the blood sample is all right whether there is no gas there is no contamination no clot okay we label it nicely what are the things that we write in the label we have to write the identification information of the recipient so this donor blood has been matched against the recipient sample so i have to write the recipient's name on the donor unit what is the donor unit number that should be there and compatibility test result see there are two checks yes or no like this okay so you have to put a tick like this that yes compatibility test is done and it was all right it is compatible cross matched blood sample okay now before you are going to you have taken the donor blood given to the patient party the patient party has taken that donor blood and he has taken it to whom he the the patient party has taken the do donor's blood back to the hospital and he has given it to the nurse now the nurse depending on whether the patient needs to be transfused at that time you know within a period of two or one or two, of half an hour or you know one hour the nurse is going to transfuse the particular blood sample so it is very important before you transfuse it again you have to identify the recipient so by the name by the age sex date of birth 
also by the registration number hospital registration number you have to do it now once you have started the transfusion you have to observe and monitor the recipient during and after the transfusion so it becomes very important these are very practical points very practical steps that you have to follow okay that you have to follow when you are posted as a medical officer okay or even during an internship the american association of blood banks has given a particular criteria for storage of the recipient's blood sample so for example they say that ideally the recipient's blood sample should be collected within 3 days of scheduled blood transfusion and it should be retained in the fridge for at least 7 days after the transfusion because if any kind of untowards reaction develops in the recipient okay so the recipient's blood sample that was collected before okay will be matched against the recipient okay whether the correct sample was taken or not that is why storage of the samples are very important so before wasting any time let us start today's very important topic of discussion okay so basically the cross matching is done to detect any kind of abo incompatibility that for example if any kind of abo mismatch was done or even after grouping for example uh, you know uh, maybe some you know some wrong result or faulty reagent we got the faulty abo com incompatibility so what we do we once you know also recheck the abo incompatibility by doing cross matching but the more important thing is to detect any clinically significant antibodies to the red cell antigens and these antibodies i am not talking about the anti a anti b anti ab no some other antibodies apart from apart from your uh, uh, your uh, anti a b and ab okay so cross matching is of two main types that there are two main types of cross matching one is called as the major cross match one is called as the minor cross match so what is basically done in our blood bank is we are carrying out major cross match because it is more important because the recipient's uh, serum is containing the antibody it is reflective of the antibodies which are present in the recipient's body okay and we are testing and what are we testing over here we are testing the donor's rbc so recipient's antibody is checked against donor's rbc or donor's antigen okay so this is the major cross match and this is the one which is clinically more important the other one is your minor cross match now in the minor cross match if you see over here the do the donor's serum the donor's serum okay the donor serum which is containing antibody is matched against the recipient's rbc now this reaction is very very less significant see the donor is just very less amount of blood okay the whatever the donor we are giving 300 to 400 ml so inside that antibody is not that much significant so the minor cross match that we are looking at the minor cross match is not very significant okay it is not a significant because uh, the recipient's body has lot of blood and much more antibodies so what becomes very significant is the major cross match okay major cross match becomes very significant now remember this i am talking for whole blood products or even the packed rbc products now for transfusion of the platelets fresh frozen plasma or the cryo precipitates cross matching is not required although it is desirable that they should be abo compatible so whatever so if you are giving platelet to a person that should be abo compatible that is the a positive is giving to a a positive or ab positive is giving to ab positive or o negative is giving to o negative okay so for whenever you are doing any of these transfusions platelet ffps and cryo precipitate cross matching is not required but they should be abo compatible okay they should be abo compatible so let us begin with the cross match now the procedure of the cross match which is very very important so there are two important methods of cross match that we carry out okay especially in our country the type that we are doing is called as the serologic cross match okay and in developed countries they are doing or in higher centers in india also there is something called as a computer or electronic cross match okay so the one that is followed most commonly worldwide also now that is the serologic cross match at few places at very big higher centers which are having a very high load over there they are doing the computer or electronic cross match so the serologic cross cross match as i told you what we are going to do we are going to test the recipient serum or the plasma which is containing the antibody with the rbcs from the donor unit which is containing the antigen this is what we are going to do 
there are two important methods of serologic cross match one is the immediate spin cross match at a room temperature and anti globulin cross match which is done at 37 degree centigrade so this is basically the anti globulin it is the coombs test that we are doing it is nothing but it is the coombs test okay so first we are going to see the immediate spin cross match so what is the immediate spin cross match now first of all the basic requirement is that that the antibody screen should be negative in the recipient the recipient's serum or the plasma should not contain any kind of clinically significant antibody so the antibody screen should be should come out to be negative in the recipient now why is it important it will be become clear when i discussed about the indirect coombs test okay so try and understand very important so over here i have taken the recipient's serum in a particular test tube and that recipient serum is containing the antibodies present in the recipient now to that recipient serum i am adding a saline suspension of donor red cells so the donor red cells are added over here now what we do we are incubating it okay and then we are centrifuging this is incubated at room temperature and then they are centrifuged for 5 minutes so the idea of centrifugation it is to bring this antibody and this antigen very close to each other so that it can increase the sensitivity of the test now for example if you see agglutination as you can see in the first test tube okay these are the bits of agglutination you can see the rbc clumps over here then it is a case of incompatible cross match but for example if the rbcs are uniformly suspended as we see in the second test tube then it is a compatible cross match so only after compatible cross match has been proved that we can issue this particular donor unit is it very clear the immediate spin cross match everyone okay so now we are going to study about those conditions where this uh, cross matching can come out to be positive and which is a false positive that means you are getting a agglutination in the cross matching but that agglutination is a false agglutination so when can that happen for example there is a ruli formation okay there is a ruli formation sometimes what can happen that the recipients uh, the recipient's antibodies or the recipient's plasma can contain a lot of plasma proteins for example in multiple myeloma so as a result they can initiate ruli formation and that ruli formation might give you a false idea about agglutination so if you give normal saline it will dissolve the ruli formation but it is cannot dissolve the agglutination so after giving normal saline the ruli is going to go away and again that the cross match will become negative will become negative for example the recipient's plasma is containing cold reactive antibodies so in cold agglutinin disease as i have already taught you before okay in that lecture on immune hemolytic anemia i don't know if you remember immune hemolytic anemia there were certain allo antibodies called as cold reactive antibodies now now when the cold reactive antibodies are present what will happen the major cross match will come out to be positive as above and the auto control is negative what is auto control auto control is when we take the patient sample and just keep it okay just take the patient sample add normal saline and keep it at room temperature if it is by itself causing agglutination then that means that the patient is having auto antibodies which is causing agglutination so a positive cross match with a negative auto control it is talking about and cold allo antibody allo means it is not inside the patient it has been derived from outside that is cold allo antibody okay now what will happen that agglutination now if you warm this particular sample because cold antibodies they are active only at cold temperatures okay so once you incubate once you incubate it at 37 degree centigrade the agglutination is going to disappear at 37 degree centigrade if you keep it for 10 minutes okay is it clear to everyone so once the agglutination goes away goes away after warming the particular sample then the cold agglutinin is confirmed and then you have to go for further testing to confirm the nature of the disease is this very clear a positive cross match and a negative auto control is indicative of a cold allo antibody always remember this point okay okay now one very important thing is that the agglutination is going to disappear by keeping the tube at 37 degree centigrade so then if it does then we can confirm the presence of cold agglutinin the third cause of uh, false positive cross match is the presence of auto antibodies as i was telling you over here also the major cross match will come out to be positive 
and the auto control will come out to be positive as well so if both auto control and major cross match is positive it is indicative of auto antibody so i have already told you how to remove auto antibodies in the previous lectures okay so now i'm not discussing that so just always remember keep in mind these conditions of false positive major cross match ruli formation cold reactive antibodies and auto antibody is there any doubt with regards to immediate spin cross match yes anyone is having any kind of doubt yes okay now now the second important method of uh, serum cross matching or serological cross matching that is the indirect antiglobulin test which is also called as the coombs test now as i told you the immediate spin cross match was basically carried out when the antibody screen came out to be negative in the recipient now suppose the antibody screen has come out to be positive in the recipient okay then what are you going to do then in that case you are going to carry out the indirect antiglobulin coombs test okay so now before i go into the details of this test first of all let me just tell you what is this indirect coombs test so for example here is the rbc i have already explained this point in immune hemolytic anemia i'm repeating again so suppose for example this is the rbc now in condition in some conditions what happens that the rbcs have certain antibodies which are coated or for example certain complement products for example this is igg antibody or this is c3b complement product which is already coated on the surface of the rbc okay so what happens that to detect these antibodies which are already present on the rbc surface i have to add coombs reagent the coombs reagent is what it is basically anti anti igg and it is containing anti c3d so it is containing antibodies against antibody or antibody against complement so once they are going to recognize them then what is going to happen what is going to happen that they are basically going to recognize them and then they are going to cause cross agglutination you understand so this becomes very 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 important so when the antibodies screen comes out to be positive in that particular case we are going for the indirect antiglobulin test also called as the coombs test so for example here we are having the recipient serum as you can appreciate in like the previous one and this is containing the antibody i am testing it against the saline suspension of donor red cells which are containing the antigen now basically over here i am incubating it at 37 degree centigrade and i am adding an antiglobulin reagent that is anti igg and anti c3d now if for example these antibodies are present on the surface of the rbc and they have sensitized the rbc surface so after i carry out the centrifugation then they are going to combine with the respective uh, antibody and the respective complement protein yes so if this binding will be there will be present then in that situation again the agglutination will be there and when the agglutination is there it it is it is the meaning is that it is an incompatible cross match because agglutination is present now suppose even after addition of this okay even after addition we see that there is no agglutination and there is uniform suspension of rbcs then that is the compatible cross match is this very clear to everyone the difference between the uh, immediate spin cross match and the indirect antiglobulin test yes these are the two methods of ca carrying out the cross match which is based on whether the antibody screen is positive or no is this very clear you have to draw this diagram in your exam else you will not get any marks in cross match these two diagrams are very important that i have drawn and shown you all okay okay if you don't have any doubt then i am going further okay now what is the purpose of the cross match why the cross match is being done what is the use of the cross match see the basic purpose as i told you the first thing is to double check abo incompatibility because sometimes you might have a patient misidentification you might bring a sample of so and so patient name but you have collected from someone else by mistake this this can happen so there might be clerical errors okay or you might have you know you know you have labeled the donor unit improperly so to eliminate these clerical errors i do the cross match so that there is a double checking of the abrh compatibility the second important thing is as i told you very important is to check the results of the antibody screen 
by detecting any clinically significant antibodies against the red cells and these are those antibodies which are not anti a apart from anti a or anti b antibodies some other clinically significant antibodies if they are present to detect those i am going to do this test so this is the most common method of doing uh, the cross matching that we are carrying out in our laboratories that is the serologic cross match now we are going to understand about the computer or the electronic cross match now it is very very uh, very very easy to understand this now the first requirement for the computer or electronic cross match we also call it as electronic electronic cross match the basic requirement of the electronic cross match is the antibody screen should be negative okay in both the current as well as the previous sample now always be be sure that whatever sample you have received you have to do the abo and rh typing for any whether it be donor or recipient any person you should do this grouping two times okay first you should do in the current sample that you have collected the second if you are carrying out on the current sample then it should be done by a different medical technologist and if it is being done by the same person then a second fresh sample should be taken and the abo rh typing should be done okay is it clear to everyone that how two times we have to do the abo and rh typing okay for both donor as well as the recipient now whatever information i have got for the donor for the recipient so for example i am going to feed the information in a computer so about the donor unit i am going to feed the information what is the name of the product the abo rh what is the donor id the abo confirmatory test which i have done two times okay this information i have already given in the computer at the time of taking the donor unit at the time of receiving the donor unit now for the recipient whatever sample for the recipient i have taken now we have to give in the computer we have to see say the names of two individuals who have identified for example a doctor has identified so and so doctor identified for example a nurse identified so and so nurse identified two unique identifiers name we have fed into the computer okay these two people have checked then the abo and the rh typing has been done then the antibody screen that was done in the recipient has been fed then the compatibility test result the cross matching that we did we have done the result and we have given in the computer now what happens after doing everything the computer is making a final check it is going to match whether this donor is compatible with with the recipient or no whether all the information that we have entered and we have given over there whether it is matching and and the computer will also select a suitable unit for transfusion by itself so for example the computer said that okay you go to so and so fridge so and so donor unit sample number will be best for this recipient the computer itself by comparing the data is doing so this thing that is done by the computer is saving a lot of time usually what happens that after we match okay see what i tried what, what, what i am trying to tell you is that that for example a particular blood sample for example a packed rbc is required now everything between donor and recipient has been matched now what is going to happen that the medical technologist working in the blood bank he will go and he will take a unit for which for example the unit has an expiry in just 4 days okay one unit has expiry in 4 days another unit has expiry in 10 days another unit has expiry for example in 20 days so now you tell me all these unit units are compatible which unit are you going to give out first tell me which unit you will use first it is this unit which is having a closer time for expiry you are going to use first yes or no so that is basically the check that is being made so computer is going to check okay this unit and he will do so computer is going to do the check in one second maybe the the medical technologist will do this check in for example uh, he will take 5 minutes or 10 minutes so this becomes very important it saves a time for all the medical technologist and there is a less amount of wastage of the blood product so for example a technologist did, did not come across this blood he gave this blood so after 4 days this blood expiry is there this will be thrown and discarded so there is a wastage so th th so that that is when the computer assisted cross match or electronic cross match becomes very very important is this clear to everyone yes so now in emergency use so whenever there is an emergency use so for example someone has there is a there is an accident road traffic accident is there is an rta and a patient has lost a lot of blood now the patient immediately requires blood okay immediately the patient requires blood or for example a, a women have severe postpartum hemorrhage and she has been referred from a uh, from a village hospital to a tertiary care center 
already she has lost so much of blood now it is an emergency in that time there is not that much time to carry out so many steps so what you do the do you carry you collect the sample and if possible at least you do the abo and rh okay so at least you are doing an abo rh typing and you are issuing the blood number 1 but in the meantime while you are doing that you should always collect the sample and you should carry out the cross match even after issuing of the transfusion unit you should carry all the steps for cross matching antibody screen everything for example if there is any problem in between then we can tell them late later so the first thing when there is an emergency requirement at least you try you try to do abo rh without cross match and you give give it okay to do the patient party but for example if there is no time no time is available even for abo rh in that case what are the units you can give so if you are going to give rbc for example packed rbc is whole blood all these then you should give an o negative rbc sample o negative blood group should be given if for example you have to transfuse plasma then ab plasma now can you tell me why it is so why am i choosing o negative and ab plasma because this o negative rbcs they do not have any antigen so no antigen is present no d antigen no a antigen no b antigen so i can safely give it to any person so o negative becomes the universal donor now ab plasma plasma then i am going to check the antibody but the people who are ab positive individuals who are ab positive in those individuals you are not going to have any antibody so there are no antibodies that is why ab plasma is being given so in that case you have to do this now for example see o negative is not something which is very common you cannot give it to every person so if o negative blood group is in short supply then you have to do triage okay you should reserve it only for women of reproductive age group in other individual for example in males or in women who are who are not in the reproductive age group in those individuals you can issue o positive blood so this is called as the triaging okay this is called as the triaging i hope you understand why we are giving o negative preferentially to women of reproductive age group because if that woman is in the reproductive age group and she can be negative or positive if she is negative and the child is positive there is a high chance of erythroblastosis fetalis okay is this very clear to everyone okay now if you look over here this is a packet of the whole blood okay now this is just a donor unit okay and all things for example it is not being issued at this point of time that is why many things are not written over here but what are the things that we can see okay let us do a checklist of the things that we can appreciate so we can see over here the name of the blood product yes this is the whole blood okay we can see the donor unit number so the unit number is given over here the barcoding is being done over here also there are many units barcoding is being done there is an expiration date which is then can you see the expiry there is an exp 13th april 2016 is the expiry date okay then the abo rh typing yes the abo rh typing is over here now basically this is the unit that has just been collected it has not been issued to anyone now for example if this was to be issued to a patient in that case over here a particular sticker would be there for example they will put a sticker over here they will write the patient's name patient's registration number okay also they will put a sticker nearby for the cross match result whether it is compatible or no the that should be compatible okay and also before issuing the blood you should do a visual inspection for any kind of clot or discoloration if it is present i hope you understand what are the things that we are checking before we issue the blood sample okay to the recipient okay so with this we have completed the cross matching and details tell me anyone is having any kind of doubt that i can help with yes with regards to cross match yes it's very very simple not very difficult okay so can you computerized part once computerized testing yes thing. yes i can repeat the computerized part it is very easy now see see you try to understand something that whatever we were doing in the serological cross match it is entirely same in the computer cross match the process is being done by the uh, the process is being done manually only everything is being done manually the only thing is that whatever information that we are getting we are feeding that information in the computer okay we are feeding the information about the donor and we are feeding the information about the recipient 
so both the things are being you know fed into a particular computer screen okay so what happens over here now for example as i told you the computer is going to make a final check and is going to select the best donor unit now what do you mean by suitable so for example you have to give a packed rbc unit and this packed rbc unit for example it is completely compatible okay there is a lot of packed rbcs for example a positive packed rbcs is there now some of the packed rbcs they have you know they are going to expire in 4 days some of them is going to expire in 10 days some of them is going to expire in 20 days some of them is going to expire in 35 days okay so in that particular scenario which is the prbc which you are going to choose so over there you are have to choose this one because this is going to expire in 4 days so we have to make best use of this yes so basically for doing this we the the medical technologist who is, who is going to do this he will take a lot of time to do, do this so the computer in one second will tell you okay go to this fridge number take this particular unit present over there so there will be less wastage of the blood products okay and it is going to save the time for the medical technologist so this is the most important it is actually very similar to the serological cross match only thing over here is that we are feeding all the information in the computer and we are making the computer do certain selections and choices is it clear to everyone now yes sir okay now we move to the second part of today's lecture which is a very easy part but i see that the students they make a lot of uh, mistake and there is a lot of confusion with this very easy part and i don't know why there is this confusion see the screening of the infectious infections transmissible by transmission it is a long answer question okay it is a very very important question and somehow when this question is being asked to students they fumble and i don't know why one other thing is this is a very important viva question in practicals also both for undergraduate as well as postgraduate students so first of all we have to understand what are the microorganisms which are transmissible via blood transfusion so via the blood transfusion viruses can be transmitted okay which viruses hepatitis a b c hiv 1 2 cytomegalovirus epstein barr virus okay then you have htlv1 and 2 that is human t human t cell leukemia virus and even dengue virus dengue virus it has been documented in asia the transmission then there are certain prion proteins like krutfeld's jacobs disease proteins then certain bacteria like syphilis treponema pallidum bacterial contamination of donor unit brucella yersinia borrelia certain parasites like malaria trypanosoma toxoplasmosis and leishmania donovani all these agents are highly transmissible but do we test against each one of them no we do not so depending on which kind of infection is more prevalent in that particular country which kind is more prevalent in a particular country which one is more endemic so depending on the geographical location every country is having their own rules and regulation so over here i have mainly concentrated on the mandatory testing which is done in india those of you the international students who are watching this lecture you go back and you see in your medical college in your uh, uh, respective departments in your respective blood bank go and ask that which are the mandatory infectious te disease testing most of these are going to overlap in some countries there might be few testing there might be some of the testing will be less some of the testing will be more in other countries but in india the disease that we are going to see that is basically mandatorily which is tested are syphilis for that we are going to do a vdrl test is done for syphilis for hepatitis b we are going to detect the hbs ag antigen okay we do the elisa test for hiv infection we are detecting the anti hiv 1 and anti hiv 2 antibodies and again for this elisa test is done for hepatitis c we do the anti hcv antibody test for malaria we do the peripheral blood smear and also we are doing the rapid antigen kit test so these are the different types of test and the things that we are detecting okay for the infections in uh, you know infectious diseases during the blood transfusion okay or the blood collection so why is it why the blood samples have to be you know screened for these necessarily so if a patient is coming to you okay and he is completely asymptomatic then why do we need to test him because if he has infection then he should have fever some symptom should be there why because some of the carriers of these infections they are asymptomatic for example hepatitis b chronic carrier okay 
some viral infections they have a very long incubation period so incubation period is the is from the time you have contracted the infection okay to the time you are getting the clinical features that is the period is the incubation period okay now this incubation period that you see in this time the antibodies will not develop and basically the test the screening test will come out to be negative so that is why even over here the person will be asymptomatic so that is why persons in the incubation period okay they might they have to be tested as well and thirdly to safeguard the health of the recipient whichever recipient is there we have to safeguard the health of the recipient so what is the prevention how can you prevent the transmission of infections becomes very important so only voluntary blood donation has to be done and mind it this information that is the particular blood is voluntary or no i don't know if it is given over here but they write that this is a voluntary unit it is a voluntary unit they write it down nicely that it is a voluntary unit because if it is a voluntary unit so you have just given the blood sample with your own wish so it is less likely that you know you are hiding any kind of disease process so voluntary blood donation is one which is without remuneration without any money second we are doing it to exclude any high risk donor so for example iv drug abusers homosexual prostitutes so we have to exclude them so for this only we are doing the syphilis test we are doing the vdrl to exclude the high risk group people the third important thing is to do screening test okay prevention how we can do by doing the screening test like we are doing the screening test for the five uh, uh, infections that we just saw universal hepatitis b vaccination can uh, decrease the incidence of hep b infection precautions that we have to take during the blood collection processing storage and transfusion so we should be very careful during that and also we should take certain quality control measures so these are all the preventive measures to prevent the transmission of infection during the blood transfusion so coming to the first important organism that is hepatitis b so in india the prevalence of hepatitis b is around 1.5 to 4% and it is transported it is highly infectious and transmitted via all blood components as well as blood derivatives the incidence of post transfusion hepatitis is around 6.7% which is a very high figure so around 100 people or 1000 people if they are getting or 100 people are getting the transfusion the incidence can become as high as 6% that means around 1 lakh people if they are giving the transfusions then 6% or 6000 of them might contract hepatitis b infection so see the the rate is very very high now what are the screening tests that you are doing for the detection of the hbs ag antigen we have something called as the reverse passive hemagglutination test number 2 is the elisa test which is the standard test i am going to lay down the principle of elisa test shortly okay and we are having ria that is the radio immuno assay secondly we have the hepatitis c here the prevalence of hep, hep c in our country is less is around 1.66% the detection of the anti hcv is what we are carrying out so we are basically detecting the anti hcv antibody so the development of antibody takes a lot of time okay it uh, it's a, it approximately takes 6 to 8 weeks for development of antibodies and the incubation period of hep c is very high around 8 weeks so during that period if the person who has contracted hep c if he is giving the blood then basically he has a high risk of transmitting it to other people so the method of detection that we are using now it is the third generation elisa so i am just going to give you a brief idea about how the elisa works okay so for example okay there is a particular micro well okay so there is a micro well several small micro wells are there or micro titer plate one of the micro titer plate is this okay so inside this micro titer plate already an anti hbs ag antibody which is which is basically company manufactured so a company manufactured anti hbs ag antibody is present in the micro titer plate now to this we are going to add the serum sample of the patient which is containing the antigen and that serum sample which is containing the antigen okay now to this now if for example a person is positive for hepatitis b or even hepatitis c any antigen that antigen that is shown in green is going to combine with the anti hbs ag anti antibody once this antigen antibody complex is formed i am going to use another antibody which is going to bind with anti hbs so this is again an anti hbs antibody one anti hbs antibody was used here another is used here now this anti hbs uh, antibody it is linked to a particular enzyme 
that is why the term is enzyme linked anti hbs antibody and this enzyme which is present over here okay if this uh, this hbs hg antigen was present then this antigen antibody complex was formed and to this this particular red antibody is going to attach now once the attachment is there then this enzyme is going to become active and if i am adding a particular substrate that is going to give a color and the development of this color is a sign of a positive elisa test positive elisa test now because the uh, antigen is sandwiched between the two antibodies it is also called as sandwich assay it is also called as sandwich assay is it very clear to everyone the elisa test how it is done it is not very necessary to know just because i wanted to tell you i hope most of you have read about the elisa test in microbiology okay yes sir okay. so it is a very easy not very difficult test now for the hiv as we know it is a rna retrovirus the prevalence of which is around 1.6% now the window period that that is that period where the antibody has not been present but the antigen is there and the patient can transmit the disease to the other individual is called as the window period now the window period for hiv is around 6 to 12 weeks and for the screening method what we used to do till now we used to carry out elisa against anti hiv1 and anti hiv2 antibodies against these antibodies we used to do elisa and then we used to detect the antibodies as well so the problem with this elisa test was was that it was not able to detect the particular hiv antibodies if the person was in the window period so then came the process of called as nat that is nucleic acid amplification test okay that we are doing for covid 19 we are doing the true nat rt pcr all these are nucleic acid amplification test so this was developed what does it do as the name suggest it is not going to detect any antibodies because for the development of antibodies it takes a lot of time okay so over here instead what we are doing we are detecting the particular organisms nucleic acid for covid 19 we are detecting the nucleic acid of covid 19 over here this is we are detecting the hiv1 uh, nucleic acid okay so what is the importance of the nucleic acid testing that the antigen is coming very or the nucleic acid of the virus it is you know once the virus starts replicating the nucleic acid it, it is present in the in the serum sample in very short time so it is narrowed down the window period of hiv from 22 days to 11 days so within 11 days only the nat test can, will be able to detect so it is increasing the sensitivity of detection of hiv the second important thing is not only for hiv in case of hcv the incubation period is 82 days so it is going to make it down the window period is so much high 82 days is the window period so it is going to shorten the window period to just 10 days so that is the importance of doing the nucleic acid amplification test so the basic thing is over here you are extracting the viral nucleic acid you amplify it and you detect it the most common method of detection is the pcr polymerase chain reaction is done to detect any kind of viral acid okay now remember this is not only done for hiv it is done for many other agents like hiv rna okay we are also doing it for uh, for example hcv rna okay even for covid 19 rna testing so any kind of organism any infectious agent rna we want to uh, you know we want to uh, detect or for example even hbv dna okay we are also detecting that okay now the basic drawback of this test is that it is quite expensive okay it is quite expensive and earlier if you remember the p24 antigen was used in case of hiv to basically de detect the hiv during the window period okay this was the only antigen which was positive in the window period but now this has been replaced by doing the nat test now we no longer do this test we are going for the nucleic acid trans uh, 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 amplification test okay then coming to the bacteria okay we have treponema pallidum now basically treponema pallidum is not that much of a serious thing and it is even destroyed when the particular blood component is stored at 2 to 8 degree centigrade for 48 to 72 hours then why is it that we have to do the testing for treponema pallidum because if a person is positive for it it is showing high risk behavior it is basically to detect high risk donors and they will be barred for life because they have a high risk behavior okay 
So how do you do, do the screening of the test? You have to detect the antibody which are specific against the cardiolipin antigen. Now, basically in syphilis, okay, these are anti-triponemal uh, anti -triponemal antibodies. Okay. So remember, there are lots of different kinds of antibodies which will bind with the cardiolipin antigen and triponemal antibodies are one of them. So it is not a very specific test. Okay. It is not a very specific test. The two methods I hope you already remember from microbiology. One is your rapid plasma reagent test and you have VDRL test. I am talking about the screening test. Can anyone tell me what is the confirmatory test which we do for syphilis? Yes. You have read microbiology. Yes. Have you heard about FTABS? Yes. So go back and read microbiology. The confirmatory test for syphilis is what? Okay. Now, what is the method over here that how VDRL test is done? It is very easy test. The patient serum sample is heated to 56 degrees centigrade to inactivate any complement product. So basically the patient serum is a source of anti triponemal antibody and that will combine with the cardiolipin antigen, which is provided by the company, which is manufactured by the company. Okay. And both of them are added in a particular slide. If you can see, this is the slide. And then what you are going to do, you are going to rotate the slide in a VDRL rotator and then observe under the microscope. It is just like agglutination. So over here, in, in, instead of agglutination, we are using the term flocculation. So if flocculation is there, that is, there is an antigen antibody binding is there. So the test becomes reactive. If flocculation is absent, then the test becomes non-reactive. Okay. Is it clear to everyone? Okay. Now the parasites. Lastly, we are going to check for the parasite. That is the malarial parasites. Usually we do the peripheral blood smear examination, but because it takes a lot of time. So now they have switched over to rapid antigen kit test. Okay.